So now we're going to see a few examples of how to write the chemical formulas for some ionic compounds. When we do this, the first step is writing the symbol of our metal. So when you see the word calcium, we just have to write the symbol for calcium, Ca. Our next step is to figure out what the charge of calcium would be in an ionic compound. So the ion form of calcium, what kind of charge that would be. So we need to look at our periodic table to figure that out. Since calcium is in that second column, it would have a charge of positive two. I'm gonna write that next to the calcium as what we call a superscript. The next piece is figuring out the nonmetal portion. When it has an eyed ending, that almost always means it's whatever element it kind of sounds like, but with a charge. Bromide sounds an awful lot like bromine, so I'm gonna write the symbol for bromine. But we need to figure out what the charge of that bromine would be when it's in ion form, when it's bromide, not bromine. So we look at our periodic table, find bromine, Neutral bromine has 35 electrons. Bromide, the ion, would have 36. One extra electron, so a charge of negative one. We'll put that here, right next to our bromide, negative one. Now we have to make sure that our positive and negative charges balance. In order to do that, we would need two bromide ions to cancel out the positive two charge of our calcium. So our final answer would be CaBr little 2. This time we do a subscript. The subscripts tell you how many of each piece you need. This thing in the box is the only thing you would be required to write down. You don't have to write down that top line with the superscripts of the charges. It might help you in the beginning when you're new to formula writing but it isn't required. Just the thing in the box is the only thing you would be required to write down. Let's try another one, that magnesium phosphate. So magnesium, we just write down the symbol for magnesium, Mg. Now we have to figure out what the charge on that magnesium would be. So we go to our periodic table, find magnesium. It's in the second column, so it would have a charge of positive two. The next piece is this phosphate. Things that end in eight or ite are polyatomic ions, groups of elements with a charge. We need to find phosphate on our charge sheet. When we look for phosphate, phosphate is down here near the bottom on the right hand side. Phosphate is PO4 with a negative three charge. So I'm going to write that down. PO4 with a negative three charge. Now we have to make our charges balance, positive two and negative three. We have to think of the first number that we could get both of those guys into evenly, six. So we basically have to turn magnesium into positive six and phosphate into negative six. To make that happen, we would need three magnesiums, three positive twos, and we would need two phosphates, two negative threes. The problem is, if you just wrote phosphate, two phosphates like that, it looks like one phosphorus and 42 oxygens. In order to prevent that confusion, I'm going to take away that two for just a second, and I'm going to throw in parentheses around our phosphate, and then a two. What that tells whoever's reading this is that you don't want one phosphorus and 42 oxygens. You want two phosphate ions in order to neutralize the charge of your three magnesium ions. We need two of that entire group. Anytime you need to take more than one of a group of elements, you'll need some parentheses. 
Another example of that is the one right below it, ammonium sulfide. If you're thinking to yourself, I've never heard of the element ammonium before, you're right, you haven't. When you look at your charge sheet, ammonium is the only positive polyatomic ion that you're going to see in our class. So here's ammonium. When you look at any other cation listed, they're all metals, every single one, because ionic compounds are generally made up of metals with nonmetals. Ammonium is a weird exception to this rule in that it's made up of nitrogen and four hydrogens, but has a positive one charge. So I'm going to write down the symbol for ammonium, NH4 plus one. Then our anion piece is sulfide. Sulfide, when you have that eyed ending, it's generally whatever element it kind of sounds like. Well, sulfide kind of sounds an awful lot like sulfur. So I'm gonna write the symbol for sulfur down. Now I have to figure out what the charge of sulfur would be when it's in ion form, when it's sulfide, not sulfur. To do that, I need to look at my periodic table once again. Sulfur is over on the right-hand side, highlighted in orange there, 16 electrons, but we want sulfide, the ion form that would have 18. So sulfide would have a charge of negative two. I'm gonna write that right here. So now we have ammonium plus one with sulfide minus two. We need two ammoniums to neutralize the charge of our sulfide ion. In order to prevent it from looking like one nitrogen, 42 hydrogens, I'm gonna put that ammonium in parentheses with the two on the outside to mean take two ammonium ions and pair that up with one sulfide ion. There's our final answer there.